All right, so in this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the perimeter as well as the area when given three coordinate points that make up a triangle on the coordinate plane. So the main thing we want to understand here is if we're going to find the perimeter, we're going to find the length around this triangle. So basically, we're looking into finding the distance between each of these points from z to y, from y to x, and, y and x to z, and then we're going to add them all up. And that is going to give us the perimeter, whereas the area is going to give us this um, space in between all of these vertices or inside of this shape. So let's go and start with the perimeter because typically the perimeter is one going to be helpful for us to be able to identify the area as well it's usually something that we have um, start off with as far as finding the distance. Now typically we found the distance between any two points using the distance formula. So if we had any two points like x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 so if we had any two points, we could easily just use the distance formula to find the distance between them. And you could definitely use the distance formula um, to find the distance for all three of these sides. But in reality, if we have a coordinate points, we can maybe simplify this. And you know, a lot of times when we have coordinate points and we can just count, a lot of times it's going to make our life a little bit easier to kind of revert back to where did this distance formula come from. And remember, the distance formula basically comes from the Pythagorean theorem. So rather than working out this formula for all three of these sides, I'm going to kind of um, abbreviate this a little bit and make things a little bit easier and quicker. So remember, the distance formula is basically just us taking our two sides of a right triangle, if we created that between any two points, and then finding the hypotenuse, which is going to give us our distance. So this horizontal distance is the change in the vertical, right? That's x2 minus x1. And this is going to be y2 minus y1. Now, obviously, the distance formula is very important, especially if we have a problem where counting is not going to be um, applicable. But in this problem, or at least in this graph, we can easily just count. We don't really need to subtract 1 minus a negative 3 to get 4. I could literally just count 1, 2, 3, 4 to say that the change in the x coordinates here is 4. And the change in the y coordinates could be negative 2 minus 4, which is 6. Or we could just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And again, we don't really care if it's negative or positive, what direction we're counting. Because again, what Pythagorean theorem tells us we're going to square these two values, right? We know that um, in this case, if you're looking at the Pythagorean theorem, 6 squared plus 4 squared equals d squared. Now, the way that we're going to write this, though, we're going to use our notation for our, our side lengths. Because remember, the perimeter is the sum of the sides. So for the perimeter, I'm going to label my distance. And I'm going to say xz. Okay? And that's simply going to be rewritten as the square root of right, distance equals x2 minus x1 squared. So that's going to be 4 squared plus 6 squared. And again, it's just going to be the horizontal distance squared and the vertical distance squared. So 4 squared is going to give me uh, 16, and six, 36 squared is going to give me uh, 36, which will give me 52. Now we can go ahead and simplify our radical. Um, we can break this up into 4 times. This can be broken up into the square root of 4 times 13. So therefore, that can be written as 2 radical 13. Okay, so I'll just leave it like that and kind of see if that's going to help us out. I always like to, you know, write things in a simplified form if it's going to um, be any help to us. All right, so now for the next ones, we can just kind of move on to these two angles, right? And I can see this distance is one, and this vertical dis or horizontal, yeah, vertical distance is one, two, three, four, five. All right, so the distance here of z y is going to be a square root of 1 squared plus 5 squared, which equals the square root of 26. Unfortunately, in this problem, I can't really, um, subtra I can't really uh, um, break apart or take out any square numbers, so I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 26. And then my last one is going to be d of xy. And again, you can see here is, I didn't really do a great graph, but the vertical distance here is 1. The horizontal distance is 1, 2, 3, 4. Wait a minute. One, two, whoops. One, two, three, four, five. So this is five squared plus one squared. And that equals 26. Okay? So again, remember the perimeter here, we're finding the perimeter is just going to be the distance of xz 
plus the distance of zy plus the distance of xy. That's not a p, that's a d. So it's just going to be all the distances. And whenever you're trying to find the distance of, all of, your tri of, your, of any kind of figure in a coordinate plane, you're just going to be adding them up. And again, you can you always you go back to use the distance formula, but I'd always also recommend you know, looking to see if you have any side lengths that you know are going to be equal, like if you had an isosceles triangle or you know, a square or something like that. Um, otherwise, you're just going to find the lengths using Pythagorean theorem or just a counting measure or distance formula. And now we can just combine these. Now, in this case, we do have two radicals, right? So, or actually, we have three radicals. So you got to remember when you're combining um, radicals that you can only combine them if they have the same radicand and index. So since these are both the square root of 26 and square root it, and 26 is obviously the same radicand, I can combine these. So it's like x plus x would be 2x. Square root of 26 plus square root of 26 would be 2 square root of 26. I cannot combine that with the square root of 13 because they do not have the same dividend. But that would be my final perimeter right there of the figure. Okay. Now let's go and move into the area. Now when we're looking into identifying the area, we need to remember area is going to be 1 half base times height. And this usually brings into a problem because how do we know what the base is and how do we know what the height is? Right? Now it would be nice if we had a triangle that looked like this. And a lot of times we think about a base as far as what the graph is you know, sitting on. Like you have a nice little bottle, it sits. That's the base. right? But if we have a triangle in a coordinate plane, we basically got to play around with the triangle, move it around to be identify what is going to be the, the best side length to represent as the base. And typically, the best side length to represent as a base is one that you can have a perpendicular distance for your height. And so if you see here, this looks to be a, um, these look like they are going to be perpendicular lines. And that would be great, because if they're perpendicular sides, then obviously my base here, I can say here's my base, and then here is my height. So then all I need to know is going to be this length and this length. Now obviously, sometimes that's not going to be possible. right? Or let's look at another triangle here. Sometimes you're not going to have a you know, perpendicular side like this. So what you would need to do then is you would need to be able to identify what that height is. And then you need to be able to find um, that distance for the height. Okay? So sometimes the height is going to be a part of the triangle if you have a perpendicular side. And then other times, you're going to have to be able to figure out that distance. Now, since I just found the distance of all three of these sides, it would be great if I didn't have to find a new distance. But I got to make sure, if I were to rotate this, that these are going to be perpendicular. Now, the quick thing you can recognize here is, again, like, is their slope one positive and one negative? Yes. Do they, have a, do they have a reciprocal rise over run? Right. This one is going to be rise 5 over 1. This one is rise 1 over 5. So you can see they are reciprocals of each other as far as their slopes goes. And one is positive, one is negative. So since this is a perpendicular height here, if you were to rotate this, this side length could be represented as the height. And then this side length could be represented as the base. Okay? Or you could actually just redo it. You could do this as the base and this as the height. It doesn't really matter which way you do because when you follow the formula of 1 half base times height, I'm now going to have, this is the area. Let's actually do area in blue. Okay? So it doesn't matter if we're going to do the xy. So we'll do the distance of um, xy. Do the distance times the distance of yz. Okay. So what was the distance of xy? Well, let's go over here. We can see that's going to be square root of 26. And then times the distance of yz, that's going to be square root of 26. Now I got to my students a lot with this, and they're like, I was like, what's the square root of 26? What's the square root of 26? And they're like, Ugh, I don't know. And I said, all right, let's, go, let's do some problems you definitely know how to do. Like, what is the square root of 4 times the square root of 4? And they say, oh, OK, square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is, oh, that's equal to 4. And I said, all right, let's do it again. You know, the square root of 9 times the square root of 9 equals what? Well, square root of 9 is 3 times the square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. And they say, oh, I see the pattern. And I'm like, yeah, that works. 
So square root of 26 times square root of 26 is the square root of 26 squared. And the square root and the 26 are inverse operations. You're just going to get 26. So that equals 1 half times 13. I'm sorry, that equals 26. I'm doing the answer ahead of myself, which equals 13. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the area as well as the perimeter for a triangle on the coordinate plane. And you can use this exact same process for any figure, um, any type of polygon on a coordinate plane. But make sure you go ahead and check out the further examples that I have down in the playlist down below, as well as the next video. Cheers.